So, in fact, there have been a number of studies, more microeconomic studies, also uh, documenting that improvement in health have positive impact on development. Uh, a lot of them are microeconomic, you know, the effect of better nutrition, of, uh, of fetus on, on, the, on the wage profile of the individual, uh, or other studies, I mean, done by development economists. And most macroeconomic studies po point to a positive effect of health on growth. Some of them don't, but we criticize them. And, uh, and that's what I will do today in, uh, in 15 minutes. Uh, so there are various reasons to believe that health uh, should be grow, you know, good for development and growth. Um, for example, you know, longer life, people uh, you know, invest more in human capital because they, they, they see that they can develop over a longer period. They also tend to save more. Also, health is good because its uh, um, cognitive ability is typically improved when you are in better health. As was being, and um, and also there is another effect, which is the the, the um, that you know population where mortality goes down. Typically, uh, mothers uh, tend to reduce fertility. Uh, there is an effect of uh, you know since you know that children will survive more, you reduce fertility, and you invest more in the education of each child. So all those reasons go towards uh, improving development. So in fact, health is another form of human capital in the same way that education is good for development and growth. So is health. Well, there are several ways of organizing uh, universal health coverage. Uh, you know, the French way and the British way are different or the Scandinavian model is different. I don't know about Spain. Uh, so you have various ways to guarantee uh, universal uh, health coverage. Uh, but it's true the big problem in the U.S. is that you don't, you don't have, in Massachusetts now you do, but in most states in the U.S. you don't have health coverage. And the big problem they have is that you have private insurance companies that charge enormous amounts and, and typically charge much bigger amounts to people who are high risk, uh, either because they had uh, illnesses before or uh, so it's those who need most insurance that are, you know, for whom it's hardest to get the insurance. And so as a result, you have 40 million people who are uninsured, in fact, in the U.S. So that's a big, uh, that's a big problem, in fact, and that I'm sure is, a, is an impediment to development there. So I think now they, 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 I think they become conscious of the fact they have to do something. Uh, there is a big problem in the U.S. because there is a taboo about public insurance. So I think, I hope they will keep at least a, a public trigger that if private insurance don't deliver, you can have the option to go to public insurance instead uh, so that everybody could get uh, health insurance. Uh, the big problem in the U.S. is not only that you, not everybody has access, but insurance companies charge uh, astronomic amounts. I mean, it's really a cartel uh, and you want to break that cartel. More work needs to be done, uh, but I think, you know, there's been already evidence that in developing countries, you know, uh, literacy is very much linked to health. I mean, if you fight worms in schools, uh, you get much more chance that children will attend school on a regular basis and therefore will become literate. So you can have direct effect on literacy rates by improving health in developing countries. I think that's a big... Uh, um, and you can plan f even physical capital investment over a longer period and, and uh, see your life differently because you live longer. I think, uh, um, I think you need, you know, uh, already all in developing country, being in good health means that you, uh, you can attend schools and then work regularly, you know, follow what's going on, not be, uh, you know, trapped behind. I mean, if you, are, if you, are, if you have to be absent a lot, uh, you cannot catch up, you cannot keep up. So I think that's true already in developing countries. In developed countries, it's, uh, it's more like, you know, uh, cognitive ability is an important thing. You need to adapt to new technologies all the time. Cognitive ability is a very important thing. And, uh, and so there, uh, it's not only reducing mortality, which is important, but for example, a stroke, when someone has a stroke, you know, if a stroke is not treated within one hour after the stroke, uh, the individual is very unlikely to recover its mental functions. So even if it does not involve necessarily uh, mortality there, uh, it's very important, you know, in developed countries to be able to deal with these kind of illnesses very quickly.
so that uh, people can recover their cognitive ability if they are subject to this kind of risk. Uh, because you want individuals who can you know, maintain their cognitive ability so that they can adapt to new technologies all the time because uh, developed economies are economies where you innovate all the time and, and, and you need a healthy population to keep up with those innovations. Human capital, there are two respects at least in which human capital can help growth. First, uh, human capital is like a factor of production. It's like physical capital, for example, or like labor. If you accumulate this factor, uh, you, you increase uh, GDP uh, or per capita GDP. You see what I mean? So the accumulation of human capital is itself a source of growth because human capital is a factor of production. But in, in addition, human, uh, the stock of human capital helps you grow faster because a higher stock makes you be able to catch up with more advanced technologies or innovate more quickly. So that's another reason, in addition to being a factor of production, it's something that enters uh, the extent to which you can adapt technologically quickly or not. So that's, those are the two. The first one is more the Lucas approach. The second one is more the Nelson Phelps, the idea that education helps catch up with more advanced technologies. That's true for health as well. So, and the two combine to make health a very important dimension, a very important factor uh, enhancing growth and development. You have various aspects. I mean, uh, one is the accumulation of human capital that I mentioned. Uh, one is the fact that uh, education is a way to make yourself more able to adapt new technologies. So you are not necessarily innovating. Uh, and in that respect, you need a good primary, secondary education or specialized so that you can, you know, quickly understand what has to be done and, uh, and have managers and have... Uh, so that's another way. And, and you need education uh, for research. You need to form researchers or people who are innovators. And that's where graduate education or higher education is important. Of course, these various forms of education are not equally important at all stages of development. When you are less developed, uh, it's more primary, secondary, maybe undergraduate education, which is important. When you are more frontier economy, it's more graduate education, which is important. Not, not to say that you should not have good graduate schools also in less developed countries, but it's true that the more developed a country is, uh, uh, the more it's graduate education that's, uh, that drives growth in this country. So when you are a frontier uh, a country or frontier uh, region, uh, graduate education is very important because innovation is what's important. When you are more a uh, catching up country or uh, their primary, secondary, good specialized schools are important. For example, in Europe, even France, for example, did very well after the 30 years after World War II, having just primary, secondary and grandes écoles. But uh, France was not particularly good in graduate education except in some fields. Now, uh, the France or Germany understand that it becomes absolutely imperative to have top graduate schools. And so that's why now they are massively investing in, in having top graduate schools.